I had really big hopes for Sony. And instead, it was just shit after dumb, after stupid, after lame. I'm totally messing with you. Sony crushed it. That was an awesome press conference. Uh, that was that was really, really good. It was just one solid hour, and it was just non-stop games. It never slowed down. And even when it did for someone to come out and talk about something, they spoke for maybe less than a minute before we're just right back to games. It was exactly how a uh, press conference should be. Rather than coming out and trying to stroke their own dicks or talk about how they're expanding the horizons of the console ecosystem and further pushing our big pixels or the best pixels, they were just showing games. And it was fantastic. I, I, I was really blown away by how good it was. Uh, not quite perfect, but really good. So they started off, uh, well they had a band in the front of the uh, whole auditorium that was playing live music to uh, a good majority of the demos that they were showing, which is really, really cool. Uh, Nintendo kind of did that uh, a few years ago with uh, Skyward Sword, where they had the band play the Skyward Sword music as they played that demo, but this, or they played that trailer, but this is towards to uh, actual live uh, game demos being played. It was awesome. So the first thing it starts off with is this low, like almost Gregorian chant, really building up to something. You're really not sure what's going to. And then uh, this kid starts uh, playing with some dolls and toys or whatever. And then he hears a mysterious voice and he says, take your mother's knife, T -t today we hunt. And the kid's like, okay, dad. And the dad steps out and it's fucking bearded Kratos from God of War. Uh, so they start showing off the new God of War gameplay. And this was really fascinating to me because what they showed was so vastly different from the other God of War games. It was, um, it was much more, for lack of better comparison, Uncharted-like in that the camera was back behind Kratos the entire time. It wasn't completely over the top. It didn't pull back and show the entire landscape. He wasn't in arenas fighting several enemies. It was much slower paced and really focused on uh, the characterization of Kratos and his relationship with his son. And it felt more grounded that way. They still fight a giant fucking troll at the end and he's got a his ice axe and he's he's throwing it at enemies and he's brutally punching people and smashing them like up against a rock and still fighting like Kratos does. Um, but he doesn't have his uh his chains of Olympus or anything uh, to swing around or chains of Zeus or whatever it was. I haven't played this game in a long time. Uh, he, he was just a bearded dad trying to teach his son how to hunt and his his kid sucks real bad. But some of the things I noticed during all of this is when they finally got to the deer part and Kratos is teaching his son how to uh, shoot the bow, it, you uh, seemingly take control of the kid for a moment and you aim his shot as like the, the crosshair turns red so you know to shoot the bow. And you do and you hit the deer and the kid's like, yeah, I did it! Uh, but in the corner, a little message popped up that says, knowledge gained plus 50 archery. Now this is purely conjecture, but what I'm thinking is that at some point you no longer play as Kratos, but instead play as Kratos' son. Because it, it's... Why would Kratos gain archery knowledge when he's teaching his son? That's gonna happen at some point, unless you... The, your pet, your son's like a familiar somehow, and you just level him up in different areas depending on what you teach him? I don't know. But it was a very different God of War. Uh, it was... And I wasn't really huge into the God of War series as it was, just because it was that kind of over the tap action brawler isn't really my kind of game. Uh, so like God of War, or the Devil May Cry games, I, I acknowledge that they're good games, but I didn't super enjoy them. So this one got me a little more interested in it just because of how vastly different it was and just a little, a little slower paced. But they still absolutely had giant monster battles and very cinematic moments and it looked really good. It was, it was cool. It was a really great way to start. Basically because at no point did, we knew at some point they gotta make a new God of War, right? But nothing has been confirmed or rumored and boom, there you go. New God of War, PS4. Awesome way to start. Uh, immediately afterwards, it goes into another trailer. Uh, this one was all in-game engine uh, and it was uh, a post-apocalyptic world uh, called Days Gone. And it was like a dude driving around on a motorcycle. Uh, I thought it was a sequel to Ride to Hell Retribution at first. I got terrified, but thankfully it's not the case. Um, 
But the, the the world they're setting up and the way they're describing it made it seem very Last of Us-ish. But it's not Last of Us. And I'll circle back to uh, Days Gone because the press conference does. Uh, but it was just another thing that they had in their show. Here's another new IP that you did not know about. They didn't actually show a whole lot of actual gameplay in that trailer, but... They showed that it was brief, and then they moved on and showed an awesome uh, sizzle reel with again the live band playing to the Last Guardian. Most important thing to get out of that: Last Guardian has a release date, October 25th. Holy crap! It actually has a goddamn release date, and it seems feasible this time. How long have we been waiting for freaking Last Guardian? Was it eight, nine years, something like that? It's been a while, and they did show a bunch of quick trailer. Uh, or not trailer, but a montage kind of stuff. But you can see little snippets of gameplay within that. And it looked really, really cool. I had noticed that uh, aside from your giant bird thing, there were other giant bird things and you have confrontations with them, whether they be good or bad. I don't know, but that was cool. It was just the little snippets were great. That's all they needed because people already, have already been hyped for Last Guardian for ages now. Uh, and they showed plenty of it last year, so now just a few more nuggets, plus the release date. Even though we all know how the game's gonna end, right? It's it's how, it's like their track record. Either the kid is gonna die, or a giant bird pet thing is gonna die. That's how it's gonna end, you realize that, right? Just brace yourself for that. Uh, so after that, they went back to uh, a live gameplay demo, and this one was for uh, Horizon. This was that game that they uh, teased last year, and it's that um, weird uh, dinosaur game, but the dinosaur are robots, and you hunt the robots and you, like collect parts from the robots, and they had a live gameplay from it. And it looked dope! I actually really liked what I was seeing. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn is the full title. Full title. So it showed the heroine um, in an open world uh, setting, and she's uh, running around. She has different bow attacks to... Uh, she saw like these crab things walking around, like collecting nutrients or whatever from the uh, fields and the soil and putting on these giant tanker things on their backs. And she was able to scan them, find their weaknesses, uh, shoot the weakness with the bow so that that shell popped off and she was able to quick scavenge some stuff out of that shell while the other crabs got pissed and she fought a couple of them and then ran off and it was it looked like solid third-person gameplay but I like the scanning for weak points and having to shoot the weak points and uh, collecting stuff she then used that stuff to uh, craft some fire traps so there's a lot of different crafting for whatever devices or explosives um, they showed some robots who were like glowing red and creepy and they're they're called the corrupted so i guess the dinosaur robots can also get corrupted which basically makes them aggro at you that's kind of what i got out of it um she did save a guy from one of these corrupted robots and she had a conversation tree with him where it had the dialogue wheel and you got to choose different things and uh she she had uh she had her character very very uh uh uh, solidify just through that conversation where she was saying things I don't run away from people and help uh, you know I'll get there as fast as I can you know take care of yourself so they really showed her what kind of person she is rather than just being a blank slate kind of character which I do appreciate a little bit more uh, so she then went had to fight a, a, a giant a bigger robot but not before she went and found a, a, a robot ox thing and she uh, used a rope gun, like tethered it to the ground so it fell over and then she ran up and uh, discombobulated it or whatever this she said with her staff thingy and basically turned it into a mount. So she got a mount and now you're riding that. She ride that over to the giant uh, evil scorpion thing who was shooting his corruptor beam at corrupting other ones. She had to fight that. She was using fire arrows, uh, disruptor arrows. She put down the fire traps and let them over it and then used like her hard knocked arrows for extra armor penetration. She, uh, there's a few moments where uh, you could seem to activate some kind of slow-mo to help line up your arrow shot. It looked really cool. Um, I wasn't... That was like something they showed last year that was kind of intriguing and now they showed a lot more just solid gameplay of it that was uninterrupted and it wasn't uh, super scripted or whatever. It looked really cool. So that was another really, really solid showing. And it doesn't, didn't stop. They just kept showing more games. Immediately after that, they went right into uh, Detroit Become Human. Okay, this one I'm far more reserved on because it was a, this is another one of those cinematic make a decision games. It's from Quantic Dreams, aka David Cage, aka the guy who made Beyond Two Souls, 
uh, Heavy Rain, and uh, uh, freaking Indigo Prophecy. So this one, basically you play as an android investigator, where it showed you being able to investigate a crime scene and collect different clues, make decisions if you want to take some things with you, like take the gun or leave the gun, or tell the truth or lie. And then he had a hostage negotiation where a robot went rogue or something, he's carrying a human girl over the ledge and has a gun, he's like, ah, if you come closer, I'll kill us both. Arr! And it showed numerous possibilities the way that could play out where uh, the dude shoots himself or the dude drops off the ledge with the girl or uh, you shoot the dude and save the girl or the helicopter shoots the dude and he's okay or you talk it out and you're both all right. So it did show multiple outcomes for this one situation and it all depends on what you did leading up to it and how you handle that situation there. So that made it look promising. That being said, it's still a fucking David Cage game. Heavy Rain sucked. Beyond Two Souls sucked even more. I am extremely pessimistic about this one. Will I still play it? Probably, because I'm a sucker. But I'm, I'm not super optimistic about this one just because he does not have a proven track record. That being said, I do dig investigation kind of games. I've been a big fan of the Phoenix Wright series for since it launched on the DS, basically. So seeing this in a kind of different... Uh, different platform or different presentation. Cool, I do like doing that kind of stuff. Now from here, they start talking about PlayStation VR. Uh, and they, first off, they gave it a release date and a price point. It comes out October 13th and it's going to cost $400, which is a lot, but still a cheaper alternative than saying getting a proper PC that can have the Oculus or the Vive. I still think the Vive is a better, is it still a cooler choice just because of the, the room uh, movement that you can do with it. But if you just have a console, PlayStation VR will probably be all right for it. That being said, they then went off to show several games for the PlayStation VR. The first one that it opens up for it was uh, one that was extra spoopy. Uh, it was all first person, a guy wakes up in a, bizarre derelict um, building of some kind and everything is gross and disgusting he's looking around and you can tell his live gameplay because the uh, the vision of the dude kind of shook a little bit almost as if the game wasn't 100% tracking a headset like it does in most VR games or because people's heads aren't that mechanical they move up and down a little bit no matter what they do and the game was capturing that so that made me really believe that this was an actual uh, gameplay demo of it and he's looking around he uh, looks inside a pot and it's super gross and like cockroaches uh, go around uh, and the kind of atmosphere and everything that built up for it I wrote down in my notes it looks like an outlast kind of game like they're they saw outlast and they want to make that kind of game for PlayStation VR and it's like okay cool and then uh, he goes into a room and he finds a tape and the tape just says kitchen on it and he uh, puts it in the VCR and plays it and the kitchen was a demo they showed at E3 last year I wasn't there for it but everyone just said it was the most terrifying thing they'd ever seen. So then it does like a, a, a montage reel on this videotape as you're watching it. And it's all these different clues and events and weird things happening. You're not sure what it means. Uh, but then as you're looking around and he goes to a different room, he sees someone walk past and he immediately freaks out. And now people are hunting him. And it's really, really tense and really, really scary. And then the title showed up. It's Resident Evil 7. Yeah. That came out of nowhere. I was not expecting Resident Evil 7. I thoroughly thought it was going to be another Outlast kind of game or spin-off or something, but no, it's Resident Evil. It's going back to its horror roots. Absolutely it is. And it looked great for a VR game that looked awesome. Now I do have a concern about that in that I hope it's not just VR or if you play it just or if you play it non-VR, just on Xbox One or PS4, not the P PlayStation VR, I hope it's still not a first-person game. Because Resident Evil has done first-person games before, and they were bad. So I hope that's not the case. It's hard to say, but it did look like an awesome VR game, that's for sure. And it's coming out in January already, less than a year. January 23rd, I believe is what they said. Much sooner than expected. But that was an awesome announcement that... Frickin' Resident Evil 7. We, we listen, we know 6 sucked, we're sorry. We're, we're going back to our horror roots. I'm hoping they'd um, 
they just move on from the Chris Redfield, the Leon Kennedy storyline stuff. Just stop forcing them back into the game. We can either start over or do something completely different. It was excellent. They then showed some other VR stuff, including some Star Wars VR. Why not? It was all X-Wing is VR. You're inside of an X-Wing. You It was basically building up to what was probably going to be the Death Star battle. Uh, it was very, very brief, but again, it was in-game footage. Uh, and the title popped up. It was called Star Wars Battlefront X-Wing VR Missions. Or X-Wing Mission VR or whatever. Uh, I don't know why they chose the Battlefront name. I can only assume it's because maybe DICE is developing it or they're using their engine or whatever. Because it had nothing to do with the rest of Battlefront. Because it had space battles. Hey, got him. Roasted. Uh, but still, VR Star Wars? I'm on board for that, that's for sure. Uh, they also teased a uh, Batman VR game. And they didn't show any gameplay or anything of it, but they just said uh, it's coming out in October and it's the Arkham series Batman. Normally I'd be super pensive about that, but they did say within that trailer in the credits, it did say Rocksteady. And I trust Rocksteady to do Batman games. Even if Arkham Knight wasn't as good as the others, I would trust them to do it more than the uh, Origins team. Now the last, uh, uh, they had another uh, VR game that was uh, a weird space exploration one. There was an, uh, this was an original game. It was a, uh, a, a, a space dude walking around on a desert space planet and he had a space gun with him. You could see the ammo counter and he's kind of looking around with it and he's just kind of going through and there's all the kinds of monsters and stuff. I couldn't tell you what kind of game it actually is. It looked like a cross between uh, planet exploration and shooting giant freaking aliens. Like a giant spider thing came out and he's all like, oh no, oh god, maybe I should shoot it. But that game is called Farpoint and that was just another idea of a VR game that they got coming for it. So again, they have a good variety. Uh, and then they also showed Final Fantasy XV, Chocobo. They were just playing the Chocobo song and it was jolly. He's riding around on it and then immediately went to dubstep which was bizarre, but then they showed the PlayStation 15 VR experience, which isn't quite what you think it would be. You're, you're definitely not gonna play the full game in VR. There's no freaking way possible, but instead uh, you play, a, I don't know the kid's name anymore, but kid with gun and you kind of teleport from, you can like pick an area to teleport to and then you turn to whatever you're fighting and shoot a gun at it. It basically looked like an extra mini game that you can play if you have PlayStation VR. It didn't look great or extra fun, but it's a, you know, it's a nice little bonus if you get Final Fantasy 15 and if you have PlayStation VR. Anyway, their VR stuff did look really good. Um, I, I was pleased by that. The Resident Evil uh, alone uh, looked great. All aboard for Star Wars VR. The 15 VR is okay, sure. Maybe if I'm bored. <laughs> uh, but either way, it was, it was enough there that it made me want to get a PlayStation VR. I still like the Vive more, but I know they have enough exclusive stuff that I would want to get a PlayStation VR for it, if that tells you anything. Now from here, they then went to another space game. This is not VR, but it was another space game, and a dude is uh, walking through like a carrier ship, and uh, he like opens up the hatch and he goes on to bridge command. They're talking about, oh, we got trouble over by the moon or something. And they show like the different planets of the galaxy. Uh, and so you go and uh, attack this decrepit ship or something, or the ship that's attacking different bases or whatever. So this capital ship then uh, uh, warps to the location as you get into, uh, all first person, uh, as you get into your uh, your own spaceship kind of thing. And then you it launches out there and then you're in a space battle and he's flying around, he's shooting his... Uh, his spaceship's guns, and it wasn't lasers or anything, it was just bullets. Kind of reminded me of Battlestar Galactica, uh, of all things, the most recent version. And he's flying around, he's shooting ships, uh, and then as they get ready to board the uh, enemy capital ship, they like kind of fly by it, the hatch opens up, and he leaps from it, and he's got like a little space jet pack with a little bit of juice on it, but then he's got a little grapple hook that he's using to shoot at the surface and pull himself in to kind of travel around or pull dudes, or sh uh, hit another space dude, pull him in, and like knee him in his uh, visor so the visor breaks and his lungs get sucked out uh, and actually it looked pretty cool as he's going on through space he's like latching onto things to get around into cover he's shooting back at dudes he 
you know, aiming down the sights. Uh, the space battles all looked really cool. Uh, then they like open up the uh, the bridge uh, defense shields or whatever to the reveal the glass and they blow up in the glass so all the air gets sucked down and everyone in the bridge dies it's actually kind of funny and then they take over the bridge and turn back on the gravity and then from there it kind of became pretty generic shooter style kind of game uh he was just you know aiming down sides shooting dudes he's able to pull up a shield like a riot shield to protect himself he was able to charge and melee a couple of dudes and ram them with it so it, it, it was a little more generic at that point, but it was still kind of cool looking. Now the reason I told you all of this, because it sounds kind of neat, and that's because it was Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. And I gotta give them props for how they presented this. Because I didn't know it was Call of Duty Infinite Warfare when I was looking at it. And all the space stuff, I was like, oh wow, this actually looks kind of cool. Okay, I'm into it. But when they're on the ground, or in the ship, or on foot and just doing normal Call of Duty gameplay, I wasn't getting as intrigued, but the space stuff looked cool. And I was not expecting it to be Infinite Warfare. So I kind of gave them props for revealing it that way, because if they said Infinite Warfare first, people would have automatically dismissed it or booed it or hated on it without actually knowing what it was. The YouTube trailer alone will give you an idea of that. So I think what they kind of showed or proved is that they have a little more creativity or maybe some cooler moments than most people realize. I'm still not going to play it because at the end of the day, it's still a Call of Duty game. I'm really not interested in that. But that was a great way of presenting it because it's not what I expected. And then immediately after that, 50,000 people used to live here. Now it's a ghost town. I love that quote. They just teased the uh, Modern Warfare, uh, the original Modern Warfare remaster and just said, also coming. So then... Uh, the next announcement they had made a lot of people uh, really, really happy and really excited because it's Crash Bandicoot. Activision still owns the Crash Bandicoot property, but Sony said they worked with them to basically do remasters of Crash Bandicoot 1, 2, and 3 from the original PlayStation for PlayStation 4. I didn't really play those games, so I really don't have a uh, deep-seated connection to Crash Bandicoot or the Spiral games for that matter. But just judging by people online and people in the audience, they were stoked to get some classic Crash Bandicoot back. Uh, I didn't really particularly care, but I can see why that's important, and I can see why that was a, a pretty big announcement. Uh, they also announced that the next Skylanders game that comes out later this fall, October, uh, will also have Crash Bandicoot in it. Okay. Whatever. Meaning if you don't like the Skylanders games yourself, it's still a pretty huge property. Uh, and it just shows that they haven't really forgotten about them. You know, so... Whatever. I thought it was fine. Uh, that was, plus you can create your own Skylanders now. Like you draw or something and the game just creates it for you. So, we'll see how many Dick Landers come out of that. Um, and then they did a brief teaser for Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens. Um... Uh, which the Lego games are simple and enjoyable and having a Force Awakens one was inevitable. Not even a year since the movie came out. Uh, you can get the demo for it right now and then the full game comes out in two weeks. Much sooner than you expected and much sooner than I expected. So if you enjoyed those games or those kinds of games, Lego Star Wars Force Awakens is really, really soon. Uh, I wasn't sure if they just took the audio from the movie and just put it into the game, or if they got all of the voice actors to reprise their roles, because it certainly sounded like them, with the exception of Harrison Ford. He wasn't quite sounding Han Solo-y enough for me, and I feel like of all people, he'd be the hardest one to get. But definitely Davey, Daisy Ridley and John Boyega, uh, and Oscar, Oscar Isaac? Yeah, that's, that's Poe Dameron. Sh shit, who's the other dude? Damn it. I can't... Uh, the freaking... Uh, oh my god, I'm brain farting on his name now. Emo Kid. I forgot... What was that guy's name? I don't remember the actor's name. Oh well. It sounded like them, at least. Uh, and that's coming out super soon, which is just... I'm sure it's going to come out on the other consoles as well, but that was just a fun little surprise. Now from here, this is another big announcement. It may not seem like it at first, but it kind of was. They brought back out on stage with a very large, grandiose uh, introduction for them. But Hideo Kojima took the stage for Kojima Productions. And this was 
And he showed a trailer for Kojima Productions' new game. It's called Death Stranding. And the camera is going across like this gross, uh, rainy, uh, muddy field or whatever it is. And you, it pans up, pans uh, across this naked man laying in the mud with a crying baby nearby just crying and then the man moves a little bit you see he has handcuffs around one of his wrists they kind of look almost futuristic -y handcuffs i would have to look at it again but handcuffs for sure and the man stands up and the camera pans up and it shows him and it's norman reedus from the walking dead and from pt uh and norman reedus picks up the crying baby uh so norman reedus picks up his norman fetus and he's like super sad and he's like looks really distraught and crying over it and it shows his abdomen it has a, a perfect scar a plus shaped scar across his abdomen almost almost as if signifying that the baby itself came from him or was birthed by him and then he looks out in the distance and there's five floating figures out in the sky and it's weird and it's spooky and uh uh, a well-known or some radio song is playing because as Kojima does he put the radio credits for, or the uh, the uh, credits for it in the corner of the trailer and it just says Death Stranding now on its own there's no reason to get excited on it because it didn't show anything for the gameplay however Konami cancelled Silent Hills and all of the clues that were in that trailer was basically Hideo Kojima saying, I am still going to do my idea for Silent Hills. And that's enough to get excited because of how excellent PT was. It's clear he's still working with Norman Reedus. The baby was still involved. The uh, baby was a very major component for PT and Silent Hills. So all, all of the clues are there. He's still doing the exact same game. It's under a different name, but he's still doing his same idea. He didn't abandon it. And that's awesome. I'm excited for that. I can't wait to see more whenever it comes, but I'm glad that Kojima just didn't abandon that idea, unlike Konami. After that, uh, they showed a Spider-Man game. Okay, Spider-Man game. Yeah, I mean, they have Spider-Man movies all the time and usually not something to be excited over. What? Insomniac is making it? Didn't expect that. Insomniac, who has an excellent track record, uh, if you don't know Insomniac, uh, they did all the Ratchet and Clank games. They're working on a new Spider-Man game. Doesn't have a working title or a full title or anything yet. They just called it Spider-Man PS4. But with Insomniac working on it, it makes me believe it's going to be PlayStation exclusive, especially since uh, Spider-Man is under Sony's movie rights, so it only makes sense. So that was neat. Uh, and then the end of the conference, by showing a full gameplay demo of a game they showed earlier. And this was that Days Gone game. Remember Motorcycle Dude who was driving around in a Last of Us-ish post-apocalyptic world? Well, they showed some gameplay of it. And I stand by that it was very Last of Us-ish. Uh, it seemed, it was more open world than Last of Us though. So, cause he got on his motorcycle and he drove forward a little bit to like this farm area. And it showed him scavenge around for supplies uh, he saw some wolves eating a dead woman. He like shoes them off and checks the dead woman for stuff. Couldn't find anything. He goes up to a truck, lifts the hood, finds something onto it and just slaps it onto his gun. And now his gun has a silencer on it, which was impressive. Is that a thing? I don't know if that's actually a thing, but that's what he did. And basically his whole thing inside of here is trying to find a guy named, what was it, Two Dog? Uh, and he, he saw a couple of very golem like creatures crawling around and anytime he saw one he was all like oh shit uh, then he finally finds two dog and there's a golem like zombie there and he's fighting them uh, and then the dude runs off to the roof so he chases after him on the roof but surprise two dog gets the jump and he tackles a uh, hero guy off the roof and they both fall but two dog injured his leg and he starts crying uh, bloody Mary just ow ouch it hurts so bad now, right before they fell, the guy was looking out over the rooftop and there were just hundreds of these zombie creatures around them, literally hundreds. So when he screamed, naturally, that got their attention. So hundreds of them started running at that dude and they, 
you know, murdered the hell out of him while the other guy was trying to escape and he's basically running away and trying to do anything he could to slow down the zombies, whether it's putting stuff in the way or turning around and shooting him as, with his gun worthlessly or shooting an explosive barrel so a lot of them blow up or throwing grenades. It wasn't super exciting as a concept because it's another zombie game. It just it came off to me like an open world Last of Us. But what they were basically showing off was, look at how many enemies we can have rendered on screen at once. And it was impressive because it was literally hundreds of zombies all just pouring out of the doors like a, a wave of, a de of decay just coming at him. He's just shooting whatever he could trying to slow him down. It just wasn't working. So it visually is really impressive. I don't know how it's going to work out in gameplay because Dead Rising to me always had like the uh, highest amount of you know, on-screen enemy zombie count and this game was just trumping it super hard. Then again, it could also be a lot of uh, technical tricks, which I'm sure it is, that not every zomb zombie you see or shoot at is an actual physical enemy that you can interact with, but it looked really impressive. It looked impressive. Gameplay-wise, mm, I don't know about that. still just kind of looked like a... Uh, more third-person zombie. And then after that, they had a uh, sizzle reel montage showing uh, just everything. A bunch of games they didn't mention that are also coming to PlayStation 4 were hidden away within that montage, like uh, Ukulele and uh, Yakuza is coming onto there. And that's how they ended their show. Huh! <sighs> that was a lot. They showed a lot, and they didn't stop showing games. And that was excellent. If I had give it a grade, that's easy. A. Solid, solid A. They, they just, they crushed it. Sony did awesome. The only thing that prevented it from being an A plus was, I wish they had a little, something a little bit stronger to end on. God of War was an awesome way to open up, but it could have been an even cooler way to end. Well, maybe not that particular demo because it was slower paced. Uh, but just showing what was. Kind of pretty much another zombie game and one they kind of already teased earlier in the conference was a little on the clunkier side or even ending with Hideo Kojima would have been a bombshell ending or Resident Evil 7 or whatever uh, but they still just showed a lot of games a lot of really cool games and I was uh, enthralled the entire time again even when it slowed down a little bit it was so brief and they got right back to cool games that you barely even noticed so Sony crushed it they did an excellent job again this year. It was awesome to see. And got to admit, I'm actually excited for PlayStation VR. Well done, Sony.